Hi right, guys. It is a hot, sticky, miserable mid-August day in early May in the hellhole oven of the great state of Texas here on the first week of May. It is Saturday, May 7th. We are under a uh, severe heat advisory and being told to uh, take shelter in an air-conditioned home. It would be real nice if the house where I was staying in Austin, Texas had air conditioning. But anyway, before I pass out from heat stroke, uh, we have to check in with our weekly <coughs> hopium apocalyptimism roundup of the week where we go in and look at the various uh, ways the planet eaters and in the first story the billionaires and all of the other clueless moron uh, apocalyptimistic hopium addicts are uh, thinking they're going to get out of this one alive. So let's all wish the billionaires uh, luck on this one. <laughs> oh man. Wealthy Americans are buying second passports as a plan B for their families, citing the corona panic, climate change, and political turmoil. Yes, the number of wealthy Americans applying for citizenship or residency in foreign countries has skyrocketed over the past three years as U.S. billionaires, tech entrepreneurs, and celebrities look to create a plan B for their families, multiple investment migration firms told Insider. Yes, more than a dozen countries are offering a, you know, rich Americans so-called golden passports and visas that allow affluent foreigners to receive citizenship or residency in exchange for investing in the country. This can be anywhere from $1.1 million will buy you a passport to Malta, or for $9.5 million you can make your plan B to escape the apocalypse in Austria, which very well might be in World War III uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, this is one of these uh, billionaire uh, leeches. Quote, we see these programs as an insurance policy. We've had billionaires approach us and ask what is the best place to live if there is a climate catastrophe or if there's another storm or well, when there is another global pandemic. Yes, one, uh, one of these companies catering to uh, the elite said U.S. Inqu inquiries have increased 300% by 2019 and 2021. Uh, and sales to American nationals increased by 327 percent between 2019 and 2020. Um, there are four C's currently driving the investor citizenship industry. Corona panic, climate change, that should be two C's, cryptocurrency, which I don't get, and conflict. I do not see the one uh, F on the list, but uh, maybe these billionaires uh, are going to get out of this alive. Good luck to the billionaires in their golden passports and their plan B's. So, not sure how many Americans moving to Britain, but uh, from Yahoo Life UK, quote, half of Brits 
will be vegetarian by 2040 and eating air protein in 10 years. All right, half of Brits will be eating air protein in 20 years. All right, half of the UK will be vegetarian or vegan in, the, in less than 20 years as the impacts of climate change increases, a new report suggests. And within the next decade, air protein, I, I'm not making this up, air protein, protein, which is, which is defined as a sustainable protein literally made from air, will be a key carbon neutral method of food production with affordable carbon dioxide based proteins on the market by 2028. So, uh, get set for your air protein. You know, I, I've heard of this term, breatharians. You, you know, these clueless morons uh, trying to convince me that there's people on this planet who eat air. They're called breatharians. They eat air. Well, starting in eight years, we can all be, if vegan isn't enough for you, just go the full distance and be a breatharian. All right, but speaking of eating things, <coughs> good old state of Texas coming to the rescue to save the planet. Texas researchers create plastic eating enzyme that could quickly reduce waste and clean landfills. Yes, researchers in the great state of Texas have created an enzyme variant that can break down plastics that would typically take hundreds of years to dissolve in just a matter of hours or days. Yes, right here in the good old, good old awesome Texas, the creation by officials at the good old University of Texas at Austin, about three miles from where I'm sitting, could solve the problem of how to rid the world of billions of tons of plastic piling up in landfills and polluting natural lands and water. Yes. There you go. I like the comment. I. I'm pretty sure it was Book Hermit uh, talking about these plastic eating enzymes. I think that Book Hermit, I, I honestly don't know, brother, are you on board with this? Do you actually believe uh, these little plastic eating enzymes are going to make a dent in the scale of the problem? But, what, but I do like Book Hermit's comments that, you know, about when these plastic eating enzymes jump the shark and start eating all of the plastic that this entire global industrial economy is based on. Could you imagine that? That would be some hopium and apocalyptimism if these mad scientists start releasing these enzymes, you know, out in landfills and then they jump onto the garbage truck and get spread throughout the global industrial economy. Good God, I, I would be blind when they ate these glasses, then they would eat my computer, they would eat this camera. Anyway, I think we have a recurring theme on, uh, on this uh, rant every Saturday. Okay, we now have the world's biggest hydrogen truck. I can't, I honestly don't know if, if, if I've done this story already. I think it, I think it's, uh, I've done like uh, electric vehicles. So now we have the world's biggest hydrogen truck starts work at Anglo-American Mine. 
This is, uh, this is how hydrogen is going to save the planet. There is a picture of the newest save the planet hydrogen powered mining truck. There you go. Anglo-American on Friday unveiled the world's biggest green hydrogen powered truck at a platinum at a platinum mine in South Africa where it aims to replace a fleet of 40 diesel fueled vehicles that each use about a million liters of fossil fuel per year. Yes, the new gen, meaning the new generation project at the mine owned by Anglo-American will use power from a 140 megawatt solar plant to supply hydrogen electrolyzers to split water and provide the trucks, each of which can carry up to 315 tons of ore. Yes. Uh, the project expected to be fully implemented by 2026 is a first step in making eight of the company's mines carbon neutral by 2030. Yes, so uh, anyway guys, this is an absolutely perfect example of bright green lies. That what do you think they're going to be using all of this renewable energy? They're using it to power mining trucks to dig up more and more of the planet to build more renewable energy. This is uh, what is called a circular planet-eating economy using renewable, using green sustainable energy to dig up a planet to produce more green sustainable energy. You know, and it actually, I, I might have to do a, 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 a more developed rant on this. this. This is a classic example of what I'm talking about, the absolute worst thing for this planet would be for humans to come up with a real, okay, a real free energy, unlimited, free, sustainable energy form. We do that and you will watch this planet go down overnight. A, a, a genuinely free, sustainable, unlimited energy supply. What do you think humans would do with it? They would ramp up eating this planet. Anybody calling, the, you know, these mainstream environmentalists still clinging to this notion of developing the very thing that will kill this planet quicker than fossil fuels and green hydrogen could ever do. Alright guys, how many years have I been saying on my Manga Bay rant, would someone just put the poor Vaquita porpoise out of its misery? You know, will we ever just kiss goodbye the Vaquita porpoise? Uh uh. Genome study offers. Genome study offers. Offers. Hope for diminutive endangered porpoise. Yes. The most comprehensive genetic assessment to date 
of the vaquita, the world's rarest marine mammal, is offering a glimmer of <laughs> hope that this small tropical porpoise may avoid extinction despite its population dwindling to about 10 individuals. Yes. Okay. This is UCLA ecology and evolutionary biologist Christopher Kriazes quote, quote, our key findings are that the vaquita is not doomed to extinction by genetics as some have begun to assume. All right. The vaquita is not doomed to extinction despite having a global population of 10. Okay, now this one, now I'm going to wrap up with this one, and you wonder why the headline, huge San Luis Obispo County property now protected from development. Okay, a large tract of land that connects Lake Nascimento to the Hearst Ranch is now protected from development, creating a relatively untouched wildlife corridor from northwestern San Luis Obispo County to Big Sur. There you go. Uh, what could be the problem with this? I mean, I'm in full support of wildlife corridors and protecting and making that any acre of land we can make a human-free zone has my vote. But I love this from Bob Atiye, president of the Atiye Foundation, which now owns the land. Quote, we want to know that long after we, meaning we humans are gone, the mountain lions, bears, birds, lynx, and even turkeys have a place to go. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how many uh, mountain lions, bears, lynx, and turkeys are going uh, to be living there uh, in San Luis Obispo County, California, after humans have gone. Anyway, uh, I have got to go uh, turn on the fan and uh, dip my head in a bucket of water while I still can. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your bucket of water while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog. Did you survive that?